God, you are amazing that you save sinners at all. And God, you did it with great cost to yourself when you sent your son to die on a cross. Please draw us near to yourself as we celebrate and proclaim his death during this time of communion. In Jesus, it's in your great name we pray. Amen. As we spend some time in God's word, we want to make sure that everyone has a copy of God's word in front of you. So if you do not have your own copy, please just raise your hand and the men will distribute a copy of God's word to you. Once you get a copy of God's word or you open or swipe your copy of God's word, please open to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Chapter 16, verse 24. This is the point in our service when we celebrate the Lord's table, when we take a little cracker and a little cup of juice that represents his body that was given and his blood that was shed. And that that was shed at the cross. And we take these elements together and we remember Jesus and we proclaim his death. This is a time for all those that would call themselves Christians, for all those that have repented and believed in Christ. Those that have turned from their sin and turned to Christ. They've turned by faith and they are trusting in him for the forgiveness of their sins. So I have a question for you. Are you a Christian? Would you call yourself a follower of Christ? A disciple of Christ. Please follow along as I read Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Here in this verse, Jesus places three requirements on those who desire to become his disciples. For all those that want to be followers of Christ, for all those that want to be Christians. The first requirement that Jesus provides for a Christian is he must deny himself. That word for deny is to reject, to completely disown, to utterly separate oneself from someone. This word is used to describe when Peter denied the Lord three times. Peter denied knowing Christ and even denied having been with Christ. Peter refused to acknowledge and rejected his relationship to Jesus. A believer is to deny himself. He is to utterly reject his old self. When God saves a sinner, that man, woman, or child is born again. And there is a significant change in one's life. God's spirit lives within that person. That person has new desires. That person is no longer enslaved to sin. They are enslaved to God. Does this reality of an old self and this rejecting of that old self describe you? The second requirement that Jesus provides for a Christian is that he must take up his cross. At this point in Matthew, Jesus has not been crucified. His disciples were not thinking of a crucified Messiah. However, when they heard that phrase, take up his cross, they clearly understood that reference. They understood crucifixion as a torturous form of execution. And they understood that a condemned person would carry their own cross beam on their way to that place of execution. Take up his cross meant the beginning of a suffering journey that would end in death. A believer must be willing to suffer. But this is not a general suffering for living in a cursed fallen world that has sin and sickness and death. Everyone in this world suffers that way. 
A follower of Christ must be willing to suffer for Christ. He must be willing to endure shame, rejection, persecution, and even martyrdom for Christ's sake. Are you willing to suffer shame and rejection, persecution, and perhaps even martyrdom for Christ's sake? The third requirement Jesus provides for a Christian is that he must follow me. Jesus requires a present, ongoing obedience to him. This is not a perfect obedience, but it is a faithful submission to Christ in all things. Jesus is not simply a part of a believer's life. Jesus is the point of their life. Are you following Christ? Jesus was a suffering Messiah. And at the cross, Jesus suffered a physical, physically excruciating death. But even more than that, he suffered under the wrath of God. He bore the penalty of sin for all of his people, for all of his disciples. Are you one of his disciples? If so, Jesus was your substitute. There is a cost to discipleship, to being a follower of Christ. We talked about three different requirements that Jesus gave for anyone who wants to be one of his disciples. So, are you one of his disciples? Do you want to be one of his disciples? Does your life reflect that inward reality of a changed life wholly devoted to Christ? If you would answer on your own admission, you would answer that question, no. Then when we simply ask when the elements come by that you would simply pass them by. This, this is a time for believers, for those that would call themselves disciples, for those that would call themselves Christians. But please talk to the one who brought you, talk to me, talk to anyone of the other pastors. We would love to have a conversation about what, about what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Believer, there is a very high cost to discipleship, to being a follower of Christ. But what is that compared to knowing Christ? What is that compared to Jesus bearing the wrath of God for us? What is that compared to spending eternity with Christ? What is that compared to the glory of Christ that we will see in heaven when we see him face to face? Everything that this world holds dear is counted as loss. As Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in, the, in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. When your hearts are prepared, please take communion on your own. Men, please serve us.